G'day YouTube, how the heck we doing? It is Foulplay here and we're back again for some more pulper action. So all the glitters is legal in the format now, so we're going to be running around testing it out just like everyone else. Um, Alright, so because we've got all the glitters, this not only buffs from our enchantments, but also our artifacts. So as far as the land slots are concerned, we've reworked that. We're going to, instead of having three planes, just have one planes and then have two ancient dens there buffing up that artifact count. Now this, uh, we, we do potentially have access to a forest type artifact land, but it does not have forest typing and hence it will be disenergy with Utopia's rule. Which is why we're just going for the Ancient Dem. We're keeping the one basic planes in there for if we get like Field of Rune against a deck and like a control deck and have to search it out. Now you may have noticed the elephant in the room, the Lotus Petal. So I do play with Lotus Petal here in Pauper. Um, I think it's really good. I think uh, this is mostly over with Communion with Spirits so other people play. Um, but this just allows us to ramp out a little bit faster versus in comparison to like other variants of the deck. Um, as far as Pauper is concerned, there is an obscene amount of card advantage in the format, and uh, I don't really think we're ever in a position to beat that card advantage, uh, so we might as well race as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible. Also, let's just do a few funky things like turn one Utopia Sprawl on land off the Lotus Petal, tap for a uh, a green and a white, and then go creature plus aura, which is pretty strong. Okay, so outside of that, real quickly, Thrill Seal Hunter Ledge Walkers, only one Sentinel's Eyes, only one Spirit Link. Moving across to the sideboard, we've got a couple of Young Wolves, uh, we got a couple of Scattershot Archers for the Ninja deck. Uh, burn Hate, Vigilance where it's good, more Burn Hate, uh, Standard Bearer. Mostly in white matchups where our opponent's going to be running their own flaring pain for against FOD decks, ram through against creature decks, and crew fix insight against enchantment destruction decks. Let's get into it. Alright, so match number one here we have Lost the Dara versus Arkits. Um, now, this hand is probably risky. I think I'm going to urge on the side of keeping it. We've got a lot of power here. Um, Conversely, uh, we have a couple of very expensive cards and not access to very much mana. Uh, looks like reversing burn. Sure. So if we get this armadillo cloak online particularly early, it's going to look pretty good for us. Um, Lotus petal, we might be better off saving it so we can armadillo cloak over the ethereal armor potentially. So we'll scout and uh, we'll just hold on to this lotus petal for now. Alright, so opponent with Kessick Flame Breather. And I do believe Burn got a particular buff recently as well. <clears throat> so we have to be like a little bit scared of them. Uh, jamming out the Armadillo Cloak here denies us first strike potentially. I think I'm okay with doing that. Any land drop and we can Ancestral Mask and just be pretty massive. And outside of that we can also Rancor and help gain a bit more life. All right, Ren's Resolve. Yep, so that's another Exile to uh, cards effect. A little bit of card advantage for our opponent, essentially. We see Chain's Lightning and Ren's Resolve. So it looks like they brick on a free land drop there. And uh, opponent's sending in completely. That's good news for us. It means no chump blockers for our <laughs> unfirst striked creature. And absolutely beautiful. We find the Utopia Sprawl, so that's going to come down for white. Uh, now we can just Ethereal Armor plus Rancor, and I guess it really didn't matter what our opponent did this game. Swing in, back up to 26. Alright, opponent playing Ren Resolve, a couple of triggers. Alright, now we can see a New Mountain and Lightning Bolt there. Chain Lightning still on the stack. Uh, our opponent is going to have a hard time taking us out with all this lifelink coming back at them. Looks like they're going for a little bit of a crack though. Chain Lightning before they lose it. Trigger, trigger. And they will have to leave up at least one creature to block, assuming that we don't have any other custable auras in hand. So getting in with the Swiss Spear, and looks like they're not over trying to scrape this one out just yet. Armadillo Cloak, turn two, MVP, thank you Lotus Battle. Alright, and swing in with Old Faithful, Ancestral Mask. That's all she wrote. Opponent concedes. Alright, so here we can see what the burn deck is all about. Um, 
as as we discovered before, they have this reckless impulse, this Ren's resolve for a little bit of uh, advantage. Uh, we do have to be a little bit careful, particularly post board. If they're not in the main deck, they're in the sideboard and the festivities. It sweeps up creatures. Outside of that, Gorilla Shaman could. I think that one destroys artifacts. Actually, that's uh, the. Cart Clan Shaman I was uh, thinking of briefly. So yeah, mostly just have to dodge end the festivities and try to gain life. Alright, so we definitely want Crimson Acolyte here as pro red. Gives us a play around and the festivities. Also like a Lotus Petal Ethereal Armor start will help do that as well. Uh, so we're bringing in creatures. We're going to look to take out the Suhana Ledge Walkers. They're a bit slow. Um, and we're also going to bring in a second copy of Spirit Link and Sentinel's Eyes and take out one copy of Ancestral Mask. All right, old no creature hand. We're going down to six. Opponents kept to seven. We've seen this one. This looks pretty good. We'll throw away one land source here. Um, or we could keep the land source, ditch Sentinel's eyes, look to get a first strike aura. Um, I think getting rid of the land is fine. Okay, opponent turn one, Swiss Spear, and attacking on that keep at seven. And uh, I think this is a pretty important time. We're not going to play turn one Glade Cover Scout. It plays into our opponent's Sorcery Speed and the Festivities. And instead, we're going to just play an Abundant Growth, get that extra card draw, set up this Glade Cover Scout plus a Sentinel's Eyes, getting it out of that Sweeper range. Of course, that could be dead to two Sweeper effects, but that's playing like way too conservatively at that point. Good news is we did hit another land source. It might be a little bit slow to come down. Uh, maybe a forest off the top would be the best possible thing for us. Uh, synth exiling a swift spear. And we do see an all that glitters and that's not particularly exciting. So we'll just send those eyes and pass. Okay, and here we are. Opponent, no attacks, no playing at the Monastery Swiss Spear. So I guess our opponent is going to try to grow this sorcery uh, at instant speed, pardon me. Lock out our creature and make us have a bad day. Uh, now we do find Lotus Battle. That's a pretty spicy find. So this time we can go green onto our forest. Um, and we can Utopia Sprawl onto that forest for an extra white source. probably want to green there we can I think we can just utopia sprawl straight away but I want to be a little bit uh, a little bit cautious here really like ramp up our toughness so our opponent has a hard time uh, nine damage is just a much faster clock as well there's no way our opponent's going to be able to block us out and there's the concession cool uh, burn match one let's hope we verse more burn let's go Match number two here, versing a sick world. We won the die roll, and this hand's not keepable. Are we going down to six? All right, this one, looking a bit better. We do technically have white mana. I think we keep this. Probably ditch the armadillo cloak because it's a little bit slower. This should be fine. We can still turn two and ethereal armor off abundant growth. That's an attack for three. Hey, look. Oh, no. Our opponent's bloody bested us here, haven't they? All right, so... Fun of growth, top creature, not creature. All right, well, we're set up pretty well in a future turn when we do finally see a creature, but for the time being, we're going to be top decking. Kessig Flame Breather, all right, and uh, plenty of mana now. All right, just need that creature. All right, here comes the fun for our opponent. Uh, these two off the synthesizer, off the Reckless Impulse, pardon me. And opponent's attacking for two damage. Uh, that's a whiff and a half. All right, so we'll pass back. All right, here comes Synth. And we see a Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning to face, plenty of triggers. Another Chain Lightning to face, plenty of triggers. Oh man, this would have been so good if our creature lived and we didn't bottom that uh, all that glitters, right? Okay. Punished for not uh, turn twoing my Glade Cover Scout on the play, game one. Smack down to seven. Oh, even more damage. Holy crap. <laughs> well and truly bested on this one. Well, we've got a good plan in sideboarding. Reminder as well, if you do enjoy the video, please consider liking, the, liking it and uh, subscribing for more content like this. Sideboarding straightforward, just last, like last game. All right, no life gain in this hand, but it does seem capable, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, we will play around that in the festivities. Turn one, abundant growth. 
And then turn two, we know we've got that ethereal armor coming. And Swifty in for one. All right. Uh, all right, that's just about enough duplicate cards. Thank you, deck. You can start drawing some fresh stuff from now on, please. And a Swift Spear. And a Swift Spear. All right, well, we can block here. There's the blowout to... Okay, our opponent does not try for it. Uh, there's a potential blowout against specifically Mugenic Growth, but I don't think the decks are running them really at the moment. I think this is a decent spot to double creature all the glitters on the second creature. I just, uh, I'm scared of triple Swiss Spear a little bit. We'll tuck with this one, leave the other one back on blocking duty. It, it's going to require, like, triple spell that costs one mana. If our opponent spends a turn Reckless Impulse, it makes it very difficult for them to attack into this scout. Alright, a couple of cards there. Opponent concedes. What? I guess they're just on a creature heavy hand and they've had enough. Alright. Um, well, we'll give it a sideboarding again, but we'll just take this straight into the game three on the draw. Alright, this hand's got triple creature, no green land. Uh, let's throw this one away. No life gain. This hand's a lot better. It's got life gain. Uh, a weakness in this hand is the fact we don't have the best capacity to play around and the festivities. Um, I think we just go like this. Opponent just land pass. All right. And we've just got all of these scouts in the world. Um, well, if they've wasted a turn, let's just go ahead and try to punish them a little bit. Um, I don't think they're going to have three in the festivities in hand, but maybe we make them use their mana inefficiently as opposed to just tempoing us the perfect way they want to. Love it out on exile there. Don't mind that at all. No second land drop for our opponent. I'm not sure what they were doing keeping the hand that they have. Uh, having said that, we cannot armadillo cloak on scout just yet, so our opponent's going to get a play at least here. All right, shock horror. There he is. It's all right. We're plenty prepared for that one. All right. So apparently, I need to click on the white mana symbol this time. All right. We got our guard down. We could play a scout off to the side. I don't think it's hugely important. Flame breather, sure. They possibly just scoop to armadillo cloak. And there's the attack, 4-4. Four, four. All right, and that's the, all she wrote. Opponent sends out GG's, and we're going to move on to match number three. All right, match number three versus Daddy Khan. We won the die roll, no landers, so throw this one back. Uh, this has got no access to white mana, so unfortunately we're going to have to mulligan this as well. Opponent keeping seven. Oh, come on, deck. Give us something we can work with. That is still not anything we can work with. Um, all right. Land creature something. Um, to bottom four cards, so that's pretty crazy. I mean, maybe we just convince our opponent we're on Ponza here. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to wait a turn on this Utopia Sprawls, like fish for information, and then maybe throw our opponent a curveball by making them think we're on Ponza, so. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll go like this. This is a little bit unorthodox, but maybe we'll get a sideboarding edge. I don't think we're winning on, like, a three-card hand here. Golgari Rot Farm, bouncing. Okay, let's throw that one down and pass it back. Alright, and our opponent is a Crips Rat deck. Okay, I think it's called Golgari Rot Farm. Alright, we're going to just concede um, and conceal some information. Alright, so here we can see the deck our opponent is on. Maybe they'll next level us and bring in the D Clammers, assuming we're Ponza, or uh, maybe maybe they just don't bring that in against Ponza. I'm not entirely certain. So we can see here things like cast down, things like snuff out, normal sort of creature removal. We saw the crypt wraps there um, in that game, and that is a way for our opponent to remove creatures. We've got Chainer's Edicts to worry about. We've got the fucking Monarch to worry about. Okay, so 
We'll try to be slick. Um, there's potential for hand disruption to get us to. Uh, there's also another creature. Um, it was sort of like hidden behind a card there called Troublemaker Oof. It's a two mana creature. When it enters the battlefield, if it was bargained, exile target artifact or an enchantment an opponent controls. So that could be bad for us. Um, so we're going to bring in Young Wolf against the Edict Effects. Sentinel's Eyes is also good for that reason against those Edict Effects. And Crufix Insight is going to help us fight through like the massive rubbish our opponent's doing. I'm going to take out Ancestral Mask because it's slow and like covers that three drop card we're bringing in and we're going to be also taking out a spirit link and lotus petal life gain probably not super important outside of armadillo cloak and it's okay to go down with lotus petal i feel all right well this is a little bit more like it no recurring white mana though which could be frustrating um i don't think we keep this and look to like spike an effect all right opponent with Kalani Garden, that's not the land we were looking for at all. Play out a Glay Cover Scout and just attack for one point of damage. I'll look to Armadillo Cloak next turn, that's probably more important than all the glitters. It's my assumption. Eclaw Wellspring, sure. Hey look, a Utopia Sprawl, heck yeah, sign me up. All right, we'll uh, go ahead and cast that one out on our Bogol. We can attack for a nice little four points of damage here. Opponent blocking out the Glade Cover Scout. All right, opponent, another Kalani, Kalani Gladden, and uh, okay, we find Forest there. So here's the neat interaction for Lotus Petal as well with this deck is it is actually a buff on our all the glitters. So we can leave this in play just doing its thing, and it's just that one extra point of damage. So in the mid to late game, it's actually semi-relevant. Okay. Our opponent is down to nine. Hopefully we can finish him off pretty effectively here. Deadly Dispute on the Eclaw Wellspring. Uh, Innocent Blood, damn. Hopefully they don't have a second effect like that, or maybe they're stuck on Black Manor? No, maybe not. Opponent amassing a plant token. Ah, oh, damn, there's that Troublemaker roof, sacking that creature, removing our trample. Oh, what a pain in the butt. Okay, so we can attack. I think our opponent probably lets this go. Although, if they're, like, worried about trample in future turns, maybe it's correct for them to block here. Alright, we'll play out the other Lotus Petal and pass to our opponent. Alright, opponent, Avenging Hunter into initiative. Gets another land, seven cards in hand. And currently their creature is big enough to take us out, but we do go ahead and find something helpful enough. <laughs> Gets us to that six power, that six toughness. We continue attacking into our opponent. Our opponent just delaying as long as possible here on that block. Um, that's an interesting one because our opponent could be able to forge there. I guess they're denying forge tokens to us or secret entrance tokens to us. And they've chosen to scry this time. Two cards to the top. That's a little bit scary. Come on. All right. That's another Monarch effect. <laughs> okay. So Monarch now on top of uh, the initiative. Beautiful stuff. All right. If we can just spike... A um, armadillo cloak. We can attack for the win here. Force the block. Still trample. Get some life link. Although we need first strike. Our opponent is uh, stonewalling us pretty hard here. And of course we find the forest. <laughs> so we'll be passing back to our opponent. Uh, Stash gets a treasure token. Another troublemaker roof. And uh, that's going to be all she wrote for us I believe. Not too surprisingly, uh, after mulling to three in game one against this black deck, in game two we just fell slightly short after all their hate effects, and it really sucks that this Troublemaker if is a card that <laughs> our opponent has pretty obscene amounts of access to. Alright, anything from Abundant Growth. We can still spike... Um, what do we call it? Uh, Crefix's insight, which would be like a draw three 
essentially. So we can actually spike back into this one and defeat our opponent. So let's play for that out. Our opponent on Reckoner's Bargain now. Gaining two life as well. Alright, initiative. Getting a 4-1 Skeleton with Menace. Uh, sure. Duress, and that's a whiff. Alright, beautiful. <laughs> uh, look, we're dodging the Edict effect. That's what we need to dodge. We need to hit the Crufix's Insight. <clears throat> and a Blood Fountain. That's not good news for us because our opponent can use it to get back another Troublemaker and interact with us unfavorably. Attacking. Mm. Alright, no blocks from us. We have a little bit of life to work with, thankfully. Come on, crew fixes. Not crew fixes, but it's a card. Um, so let's go ahead and cast it. So now we can start attacking into our opponent as well. We can start blocking their nonsense, such as uh, <laughs> this monarch creature that loves attacking. So this goes from graveyard to hand, so it can't be an instant speed combat trick. Alright, opponent blocking with the Menace Creature instead of the Guild Sworn Prowler. I guess they're going for that ultimate card draw there. And this is probably going to be a... Oh, draw off blood token, okay. Reveal the top 10 cards of your library. Put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield with 3-1-1 counters on it. It gains Hexproof until your next turn, until your next turn then shuffle your library. Okay. Uh, we can still beat that. Yeah, that's not too bad. We're out of range of Crypt Rats active, which is nice. Deadly Dispute on the Guild Squad Prowler. That's going to be like draw three cards in total. Ten cards in hand for our opponent. 28 left in the library. Innocent Blood. All right, we'll uh, go ahead and concede at that. Moving on to match number four. All right, match number four and uh, classic no lander. So we'll mulligan that one. Now we've got no creature in this hand. Uh, versing Elvis 10 this match, down to 5. Uh, still no creature, and opponent keeping a 7 card hand. There's a pretty big disparity between starting resources here. So go ahead and keep this one and get rid of what's expensive. I guess we do it like this. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. We spike some white mana early on. <laughs> There's three of them in the deck, so not super likely, but who knows. And we're versing the white blue affinity deck. Um, they also play all that glitters, but they have a pretty much higher artifact count than what we have. So we'll go ahead, a rancor attack, Silhana Ledge Walker, rubbish draw. Gonna have to do better than that if we're gonna take anything this match. Okay, this affinity deck has great furnace, which means it's probably Esper. I don't think it's gonna be Jeskar, but who knows? If they want all the gl glitters, so uh, they could splash for it. Spring leaf drum. All right, opponents change gears. They are holding up blockers, and we find a lotus petal. It's not the white mana source we want, but uh, there's a chance they're holding up like spell pierce or something here. I guess we just play into it. Uh, yeah, I love the way that this is making me interact with the interface here. And what do we got? Metallic Rebuke. Uh, okay, well, that one fizzles. I guess at least we get to attack for three now that Ginger Brute is tapped. Second Great Furnace for our opponent. Seems like they're pretty heavily in Is It at the moment. I'm not seeing anything to change my mind from that. Our opponent's rattling off some stuff, some chromatic stars, thought cast, refueling that hand. They did float a white mana there off the chromatic star, so it is reasonable to think that they could be Jeskai. Uh, we finally hit a land source. No follow up play, though, obviously. Our opponent's got a pretty ch chunky ass board state. All the glitters on the Ginger Brute. That's going to be able to attack us. Our opponent can make it unblockable as well. Only blockable by creatures with haste. That's going to be 15 damage. We're not in a position to block. Uh, conceded draw step. Galvanic Blast for the win. All right. All right, so this is actually a previous deck list of my opponents. We can see here that they're pretty heavily 
on the affinity plan. Sort of, they have the best burn spell in the format in Galvanic Blast. They have Thoughtcast there. Um, my opponent's current deck list was playing Metallic Rebuke as well. It doesn't look like they have that in this particular deck list. From the sideboard, I guess there's not too much to worry about outside of their actual game plan. There's possibility for like end the festivities, Cut Clan Shaman. Alright, I'm not entirely sure how to sideboard here. I don't have any dedicated artifact hate in my sideboard. I think creature removal could be good against that ginger brute, uh, especially given our opponent's got all the glitters. Instant speed removal could be decent. Crifix's insight could help fight through counter magic late game, refuel our hand. Sideboarding out wise, I'm just going to take out a rainbow of cards and hope that it works well for us. Alright, this hand looks good. Let's keep it. No wasting, no mucking around, just getting straight into this one. Alright, opponent tap land, ornithopter. Anything else from our opponent. They could spew out a 4-4 if they've got enough uh, free cards. Okay, excellent. Uh, I think we just ethereal armor attack. No extra buff from the ancient den on ethereal armor. If we find all the glitters, of course, it will have its use. Alright, opponent, all the glitters on their Ornithopter. That's a 4-6. That's pretty big. Attacking us. Fortunately, we have the life gain on Crackback here. And Crefix is Insight. I think the most important thing is resolving this Armadillo Cloak, getting that life gain. Um, there's potential this gets countered, but we might want to just sequence it after another spell, like a Rancor or an Ethereal Armor. So... We'll, uh, we'll see how much mana our opponent holds up if they're holding up a Metallic Rebuke and make a decision from there. Alright, and Therabian Inspector from our opponent. Uh, plus a Thought Cast. Looks like they're digging for land drops. If they miss, that's pretty huge on tempo for us. Uh, we'll just be able to resolve <laughs> Crufix's Insight unchecked, potentially. Uh, so they can tap that 1-2. They can't have a metallic rebuke this turn. Ginger Brute, okay, fantastic for us. Eight power, opponent switching to blocking mode. Uh, now we can just crew fix his insight and hold up either sort of mana out of hand here. We can play that after we get our draws. All right, we got an excellent rainbow of cards here. We'll take all three. And now we can just play out our Ethereal Armor and continue being the beatdown. So attacking here, we don't actually net any damage, but we do gain a lot of life. That's probably safer than like doing some sort of block play or something. Um, if our opponent blocks with two creatures, we just first strike damage to the Ginger Root first and we're all good. Our creature will not die in that instance. So back up to 30, not too shabby. Alright, opponent, Ancient Den into Therabian Inspector. Ornithopter grows by two pretty instantaneously. And we see our opponent drawing a card off a clue token, playing a Springleaf Drum, two cards in hand, tapping a Ginger Brute for another Ginger Brute. Okay, I think we're officially in a pretty strong spot here. Our opponent can be holding up Metallic Rebuke here. Uh, let's see what they do about this first Rancor. Sure. So now we can play around this second Metallic Rebuke by going another Rancor. Enough to pay three mana. And then we just spike for the win and assume they don't have Metallic Rebuke at all. If they do, they're going to be tapping down their creatures, which makes their blocking worse. Hey, let's go. Our opponent concedes. Excellently. Good navigation there. So I would like Standard Bearer, um, but... Our opponent's Galvanic Blast probably just make it a little bit unplayable. The upside to Standard Bearer is it does force our opponent to target our creature with all the glitters, but I think that's pretty low likelihood to be successful. Um, we might want an extra source of Vigilance here. Yeah, maybe something like that. This could be getting too low on creatures, though. Maybe I should have left it as it was. We'll go for this regardless. Uh, opponent keeping seven for inst pretty instantly. This is uh, kind of indicative of this league. These hands are fucking shit. What the hell's going on here? So we have to put three cards in the bottom. So we can go one, two, three. Q 
keep the refuel, keep the mana fixing. I think it's the best we can get. So Metallic Rebuke counters any spell unless they pay three, so we want to resolve our creature. Um, there's no getting tricky. And oh, Ancient Dent is a land. Opponent's second Ginger Brute. Ornithopter, three left in hand. And there's the attack, so nothing too scary just yet. Our opponent is tapped out currently. Like Lotus Petal Insight, I'd be pretty keen for. We find Ancestral Mask. Not really what we're looking for. Uh, abundant Growth here. Spike a one mana aura, not a one mana aura. Not a land either, that's pretty unfortunate. All right, all the glitters, and now the clock's pretty quick. Sovereign Home Guard, Affinity for Artifacts, 3-2 Flyer, attacking for 9 damage. We've got no blocks we can make. Alright, we hit a land drop. What does that do? We need to somehow block our opponent's creatures next turn, but we just take too much damage wide and lose the game. Alright, let's go ahead and concede. Absolutely killed by mulligans that game. Alright, our opponent keeps 7 cards, and this hand looks reasonable, but not amazing. I think we go ahead and keep this one. Uh, into Ponder. Alright. Opponent does not shuffle with the Ponder. Find Ethereal Armor, cool. So now we have, like, a business effect ready and raring to go. I think we just resolve the Ethereal Armor now, uh, before our opponent potentially has something like Spell Pierce. Alright, looks like our opponent may be even holding up an effect like Counterspell. Uh, I like Abundant Growth here. I don't think our opponent ever counters the Abundant Growth, but they might counter the next spell we go to cast. And then I kind of like just attacking here and not like playing into the Counterspell. And then holding up multiple Rancors next turn. I think... That's a higher percentage chance of winning than our opponent just not having Counterspell. Opponent plays Mental Note. Alright, and our opponent is on a Delver deck. On the Mental Note there, they did Mull the Thought Scour and the Spell Pierce. Oh wow, we see Sentinel's Eyes as well, that's huge. Alright, let's see what our opponent's got Counter Magic wise. Alright, so that's a hard Counterspell there from our opponent. That's perfect though, because no double spell pierce. And we can just empty all our important stuff. Attacking for six. So this could just be Ninja Fairies. I think it used to play Delver, not anymore. It could just be a Delver deck, I'm not entirely certain. Uh, opponent snaps their own Delver to hand. Interesting. It's Larian Terrors. Yep, I guess that makes sense. Oh, wow, that's pretty massive. Holy cow. All right, so green, throw this one down here. I think going for, yeah, green or white. It's it's much the same at this point. So Armadillo Cloak gives us 12th power. That means we can attack, kill two. Yep, so we just attack, force our opponent to block with at least one Talarian Terror. So this is just mono blue Del Delver. Opponent concedes at that. Uh, sweet, on to sideboarding. Alright, so here we can see our opponent's deck. They got a couple of these big fat blue creatures. Um, a few cards to get cards in the graveyard. Boomerang to bounce, that's pretty interesting. Obviously also counter spell, spell pierce, force spike, those effect. Uh, Lorien reveals in this format too, that's pretty strong. In the sideboard we can see Echoing Truths. Um, and a Null, which could be a problem. I don't see Curfew, but that's always on my radar against Blue Ducks. Alright, if you've made it this far in the video, guys, please do consider subscribing. It helps support the channel, and hopefully you're enjoying the content and want to see more like it. Um, Alright, so semi-consideration on Ram Through. I don't think it makes the cut, though, especially against Counter Magic. Um, I think Crucifix's Insight is probably pretty good. I think things like Sedinel's Eyes and Spirit Link are reasonable. Um, Ancestral Mask is probably just... Like, it's good and it's strong, but I think I want to be quick in this matchup. Um, 
that card just does not do that. We have all the glitters for a similar effect anyway. Um, Sentinel's Eyes gives us that ability to play into counter magic a little bit more effectively as well, with potential to escape it later on. Alright, here we see a Silhana Ledgewalker hand, opponent keeping 7 cards. The risk with a hand like this is the opponent just has counter spell and we don't resolve a creature. Um, everything we got going on it is kind of nice outside of the fact it's only got one creature. I think because we're up a game we can risk it. Silhana Ledgewalker plus like double all the glitters is going to be really hard for our opponent to block. So I'll try to high roll this, hope the counter magic is spell pierce and we don't get blown out. Another forest... Abundant growth on our forest. Opponent could force spike this spell piercer. I think it's probably better served for an enchantment later on. If they've got a counter spell heavy hand though, they might go for it. Said they thought scour targeting us instead of themselves. Uh, okay. Did they just give us a utopia sprawl? No. We must have drawn utopia sprawl for turn. Pardon me. Our opponent with Ponder during their turn plays one land out tapped. So they're giving us the chance to actually resolve our creature now, which is interesting. Utopia Sprawl here. I guess we're potentially denying ourselves the chance to resolve our creature against Counterspell. Um, that's fine. I think this one resolves. Yeah. Good, good. Again, with like Spell Pierce, I probably want to hold it for auras. We got a fair bit going on in our hand if we can go there. Opponent Mental Note targeting themselves, Echoing Truths to the bottom. Uh, that's kind of good that we've lost two of our opponents, or our opponents lost two of their Echoing Truths when we got double all the glitters in hand. Alright, opponent's still doing stuff, chooses to shuffle their library with Ponder, now they're doing a Brainstorm, getting some fresh cards. Looks like they're just land screwed at the moment. Alright, they do indeed find a land there. And what do we see off top? Sentinel's Eyes. Uh, Sentinel's Eyes is kind of nice. Kind of not. So I'm going to double white here. I guess this is fine. What? Come on, man. The one time it doesn't make me click stuff and null. Oh, God. What a load of crap. Normally it lets me choose the mana symbols and for some reason it just hard went through when it was actually relevant that I would, you know, pay with a forest. So now our opponent resolves a Talarian Terror. I mean, at least we're up a game, but that's an extremely frustrating thing. Okay, let's try and do this properly this time. Alright, opponent, proper counter spell. That's a shame. Can't say I'm surprised though, so we'll abundant growth as well. Opponent's creature cannot block ours, so we can start attacking. We got, I mean, really good value in our hand, but it's very slow to deploy this. Very easy for our opponent to disrupt it with cheaper effects. That's such a critical, like, misplay or, like, bug with the game where I couldn't double all the glitters in that turn as well. Um, like maybe my opponent has the second and null, but if they don't, we get underneath counter spell and we actually have a resolved all the glitters with all these enchantments on our lands. All right, Talarian Terror attacking. We go to 15. Opponent, four cards in hand, two mana up. There's another Talarian Terror and another one. So that's 15 damage on board. We need to gain some life. Thankfully, we do have... The card in hand to do that. Now, I don't think it's worth going Crucifix's Insight and trying to spike anything here. Let's just get some life gain happening. Our opponent can't block us. Back up to 19. Um, Alright, what happens now? Just attacking for 15? Sure. So that puts us to 4. We need to rattle off some enchantments here. Preferably our opponent just plays Triple Delver. Come on, one more card. Damn. So they're holding up potential counter magic now. Let's play our Ash Barons. Play our Crifix's Insight. If this gets countered, that's really bad for us. Alright, we find all the glitters and armadillo cloak. I 
Uh, all that glitters is the play here for obvious reasons. It will gain more life attacking. We already have lifelink, trample. Opponent with spell pierce and we're one mana short of uh, smashing through. So we can save that and go back to sideboarding. I think spirit link might be a little bit overkill. Let's remove it. We'll bring back in one ancestral mask for that extra bit of power and we'll just submit and go there. Uh, the sound is terrible. Sound is good, we can keep. Potentially soft to like counter magic, but it has a creature which is difficult for our opponent to block. And we're just one land short of being able to resolve our Medillo Cloak turn three. All right, we found that mana. All right, Rancor off top as well, beautiful. All right, hope for no Force Spike. Cool, so Hana Ledgewalker is on the battlefield. Opponent probably mental notes, thought scours, end of turn, Lauren reveal, sure. Alright, now there's the obvious interaction that our opponent can have with us. Um, they're probably just holding up counterspell. I think our best play is just to try and force the issue from our opponent. We'll run on Rancor, we'll Ethereal Armor if we have to, we'll get this counterspell out of our opponent's hand. Okay, first to null from our opponent. Sure. Theral armor now. This leaves us like inflexible in future turns, and now they got the spell pierce. Yeah, that's a shame. Leaves us inflexible, but we just have to like try and force a way for Crufix's insight and armadillo cloak to resolve. Alright, opponent hits the brainstorm now. Uh, then we see a mental note from our opponent. One card up. Talarian Terror resolved. Land is not what we want to draw. Um, this is just hands down our best enchantment though. So we can start attacking. Start gaining life. Hopefully there's a good spot to resolve Crufix's insight in the future. And we see a Ponder. Uh, Ponder shuffles. Opponent seeing new cards. There's a draw. There's a Brainstorm. And Cryptic Servant, Serpent from our opponent, Talarian Terror attacking for five. All right, cool. That's fine with us. So is it worth resolving extra three power, having a six six, which is hard to block, or spiking the Crufix's Insight? Let's just spike the Crufix's Insight. That's a massively low roll on the Crufix's Insight. That's really unfortunate. All right, well, we'll play it out anyway and attack. All right, now we see a Delver. Opponent down to two cards in hand, attacking for 11. No blocks from us. And potentially our opponent is holding up interaction. So let's go ahead and see what we draw off Abundant Growth. Utopia Sprawl, not all that exciting. And I think we just have to try and force the issue here with all the glitters. I hope our opponent's out of counter magic. Oh my god, all that glitters resolves. We get to attack for 10 here, and our opponent is close to dead. One more attack will do it. Um, they do have a potential blocker with Delver of Secrets in future turns, if it flips to the Insectile Aberration. Uh, but we do have Trample, and that should be enough to win the game. Oh, opponent with Echoing Truth on our Armadillo Cloak. So that's going to significantly shrink our creature. And I guess they're looking to top deck Counterspell this turn. Do we see Counterspell off the Delver? No Counterspell. All right. They still have a chance to play it with like a Brainstorm or something like that. Opponent concedes. Okay, so that was a nice little 3-2 that we got with the deck there. Um, our losses, I mean, I think we're pretty fortunate. We won the game one against Delver there and then... You know, game three were on the play and pretty fortunate from that respect. Um, our losses in games three and four were mostly due to mulligans, but that's what you get when you sign up to playing Boogles. Um, as far as everything is concerned, I think all the glitters felt okay. I don't think it felt super busted. Uh, we didn't see any instance where playing Ancient Den was detrimental to us, so that was nice, and it does give us that little bit of a hedging. Uh, with that extra artifact for all that glitters. Uh, not too many matchups where we needed to side 
scored in Ram 3. I think we bought it in in one matchup, but it wasn't super critical against that Jeskai Affinity deck. Um, Krifix's insight is just seems to be fantastic at the moment. Really good at refilling our hand. Um, something I should probably be a little more aware of when I'm sideboarding it in is maybe sideboarding out some Lotus Petal, as much as it pains me to say that. The more enchantments that we've got to like hit with Krufix's Insight really fuels up its power. And we saw there, in, especially in that final game against Delver, when we Krufix's Insight into like Abundant Growth uh, plus a Sedinal's Eyes, it was pretty medium and pretty average. Uh, but we still got the victory regardless, thankfully. Um, I think the deck's, you know, reasonably placed at the moment. It's not going to be super busted or anything like that, but, you know, if there's lots of burn running about, and especially with that extra, like, reckless impulse effect that they've got, there's going to be a bit of burn running about, so we can abuse that with some armadillo cloaks, some spirit link, and some hexproof guys, why not? Thank you all for watching, I do hope you enjoyed the video, let me know what you thought of the deck list down below. Um, I haven't had my eyes on Pauper for a while, so this deck list could potentially do with a fair bit of refining, but good place to start and a good league to start. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I'll see you then.